Alrighty, so the story that I have for today, this is going to be one of those stories where another mayor in the United States has decided that he's going to name gun violence a public health crisis rather than address it the way it should be as a uh, an issue of that's criminal in nature. I don't know any other way to describe it. And it's interesting because some of the proposals he has, I don't know, we'll get to it. We'll let the media kind of tell the story. So I'm going to use a story from a local 10 TV station, local to me at least, and it says, Ginther declares gun violence a public health crisis in Columbus. Many of you may know, a lot of you may not know, that Andrew Ginther is the mayor of the city of Columbus. And uh, he has, over the years... I don't think it's a stretch of the imagination to say that he's taken kind of a stance as a uh, as an anti-police activist. He will tell you that he's a police reformer. I will tell you that he's more of an anti-police activist. So I'm going to play the video from the media here and tell you, let you see in his words what he's planning on doing. And then we're going to talk about that for a moment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger. I'm going to get out of the way, and I'm also going to let you know that uh, a portion of this video, I'm going to kind of skip ahead for a second because it's just a uh, community activist talking to the reporter, so you'll it'll make sense. You'll see. Well, last year, the city of Columbus set a record for homicides with more than 200. Tonight, the mayor is declaring gun violence as a public health crisis, and he announced the creation of the Columbus Alliance Against Illegal Guns to Fight Back. 10 TV's Richard Solomon spoke with one community activist in Linden about this new initiative. Any effort. We're declaring gun violence a public health crisis. Mayor Andrew Ginther announced the newest ally in the fight, the Columbus Alliance Against Illegal Guns. The goal is to stop illegal guns from coming into the city and flowing into others. It's made up of people in the community, faith leaders, city leaders, and medical professionals. The group will demand gun reform from state house and Congress and birth new programs. We don't grow or manufacture guns inside the city of Columbus, but they're rolling into our neighborhoods just as they are communities around America. Gun violence won't be solved overnight. But the effort is what Ralph Carter can stand behind. I just don't want it to be a puff piece. I don't want it to be something that we're just talking about and there's really no action behind it. We want this to be a real freight train to really knock out this violence. In Columbus, Richard Solomon, 10 TV News. Alrighty, so there you have it. The mayor of Columbus is banding together with faith leaders and medical professionals to end this gun violence. And one of the big... Um, key elements of his plan is that he's calling on state leaders or state legislators to pass more gun laws. That's kind of the crux of what he's getting at here. And I've seen this kind of statement before from him. Um, I, if you follow him on Twitter and you follow city council of the city of Columbus on Twitter, you'll see that they're often criticizing state leaders because they don't believe that the state of Ohio has strong enough gun control laws. Now, I do want to pause for a moment and just say, you know, if let's say for a second that the state does pass some some gun call some gun laws and they'll they might pass a law that says all handguns are going to be illegal because handguns are violent, um, according to what a lot of people think. So who do you think they expect to go out and enforce these gun laws? Because this new anti-gun violence alliance has medical professionals and faith leaders and stuff. Um, if those gun laws are enacted and more laws are put in place, are they going to be the ones that are out there enforcing the laws? I don't think so. Um, unfortunately, when you talk about adding more gun laws, more res gun restrictions to our society, what you're doing is you're saying, I'm going to expect law enforcement to go out there and enforce these laws. And I'm here to tell you that when law enforcement becomes more active enforcing restrictive gun laws, that's how you start, especially when they're going after violent people, because this is gun violence after all. So if you're going after people who possess guns and are violent, what you're going to have, unfortunately, is more violent interactions between the police and the citizens. And I didn't think that's something that the mayor wanted. Um, I would think that 
enacting laws that would create more violent encounters between police officers and citizens would actually be something that the mayor of Columbus would stand against. Um, but maybe not. Maybe that's not his take. Um, something else that I want to bring up is... I'm going to close this one because that one has loud audio. You may remember there was a story a few months ago where a Franklin County judge, actually, this might have been in 2020, um, maybe 20, no, it's 2021, June 2021, June 2021. Uh, it was a Franklin County judge. His name is Judge Fry. He offered a man a shorter probation sentence if he agreed to get his COVID vaccine. Now, the guy in this case is this guy right here. And his name is Sylvan A. Latham. Now, what was Sylvan A. Latham being charged with? That he was given a lighter sentence for getting a COVID-19 vaccine. He was charged with improper handling of a firearm, possession of drugs, another count of possession of drugs, and weapons under disability. This is the one that I really want to talk about. This is a uh, felony in the third degree. This is not a small time crime. So we have gun laws already on the books. One law says that if you're a, if you're convicted of a felony and it's a certain list of felonies, it's not necessarily all felonies, you lose the right to possess a firearm in the future. Um, this man, Sylvan A. Latham, has already been convicted of a felony in his past and has been barred from ever owning a firearm again. Unfortunately, he was caught with a firearm and he was also caught with at least two different kinds of drugs. Um, the people who often commit acts of violence with firearms are also the people who are often carrying drugs and firearms together, if that makes any sense to you. So the penalty for this young man who was caught with a gun that he wasn't allowed to have because he was already banned from having a gun, uh, the penalty he got was he got probation. Um, he was not given any jail time. He was not really sentenced. And not only was he given probation, but he was given a lighter sentence because he agreed to get a vaccine. So the question that I have is what is the point of introducing more restrictive gun laws if we're not going to enforce the laws that we currently have on the books? I'm just going to change this out so it's not so bright. Um, this, I'm going to do that. This brings me to another topic that is actually, this gives me an opportunity to answer a question that I get a lot. And this question normally comes in the form of an attack because people will say, well, what are you going to do if, or, you know, here's the question. Would you obey a law that is unconstitutional? And I'll usually say something like, well, if it's unconstitutional, it's probably not a law. And then they'll say, no, 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 no. What would you do if tomorrow President Biden passes a law that makes all guns illegal? Would you refuse to follow that order? Or would you go door to door with everybody else and start collecting guns? And this is where they say that police officers are turncoats and all these other things. Um, now there's two parts to this answer. The first part is that... Um, if you're, a, if you're a police officer and you're smart, you would never publicly state whether or not you're going to enforce a particular law. Because if you do that, you are compromising yourself. And you're also opening yourself up to be in a lot of trouble over something that hasn't even occurred yet. The other thing that I would like to bring up is my dog is barking. I apologize for that. Um, the other thing I would like to bring up is that we don't even enforce the gun laws that we have on the books now. So what makes you believe that if another law is passed, that the police are going to start going out and just sweeping people up and taking them to jail? Um, I also like to point out things like, like, for one, there's no gun registry in the United States. And I don't think it ever will be. There, and also, I'll say that there will never be a, a law like that is, that's passed. And if a law like that is ever passed and becomes law, we're going to have a lot more problems than you realize. And I'll tell you that um, our society will probably have fallen to the extent that I will no longer be a police officer at that point. So it's not something I have to worry about. But also, 
Um, like when I go to work every day, the precinct that I work, we have a dry erase board in the back of the roll call room that, and then on the other side of it, we have a, uh, a, a wall. And on that wall is taped a bunch of mug shots of known gang members. There's probably a hundred mug shots on that wall of known gang members who are out there dealing dope, carrying firearms and doing all the other stuff. There's also a dry erase board that has a list of houses. Um, I know that it goes from top to bottom and it's at least two, maybe three columns deep. So there's probably 60 or 70 houses on that list. Those are all houses that we have confirmed are dealing in narcotics. Um, those are houses that are selling things like fentanyl, cocaine, meth, you name it. Um, often it'll have an address and it'll tell you the name of the dealer and his street name. And it'll tell you something like through the back door, through the side window, you know, something like that. So we already have all this information about criminal activity that's going on, but we don't have time or the resources to go and bust all of those people. Um, what makes you believe that if the president of the United States passes some new law and somehow that is able to get through the entire Supreme Court process and everything, that we're actually going to have time to go out and enforce that law? So the moral of the story is that that's a ridiculous question. And by asking that question, you're proving that you're not smart enough to understand how the system works because it's never going to come to that. So please, for the love of God, stop asking me that question. And then if you will, if you may, if you're still with me and you remember what started this whole video, even though I already deleted the tab, um, what do you think about gun violence being named a public health crisis? Do you think that is going to solve the problem of these young kids in most situations, it's young kids picking up a gun and shooting, shooting people for basically no reason? Do you think now that it's been declared a public health crisis, do you think that's going to fix the problem? I don't know. That's the question I would like to answer from you. Those are going to be my thoughts for today. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you soon.